I have one goal in life, and that is to kill Ragnaros on Classic Hardcore. Probably the most iconic boss the game has to offer, and the final boss of the first raid, Molten Core. But there's a slight problem with this. After streaming for 6 days, playing 100 hours and hitting level 60, I quit for a week. You know, to edit the video and also because of burnout. And now all these casuals, who level like normal people, have caught up, and comparatively, my gear sucks ass. Which means if I want to have any chance of entering the core, I need to step up my game. So now I have two options. One, I could farm a bunch of gear through crafting in dungeons like a normal person, or I could spend hours upon hours killing the same mob a thousand times over. To kill Ragnaros, you need three things. One, a raid group, two, fire resistance gear on your tanks, and three, aqua quintessences to douse the runes of warding to summon Major Domo Executus. After beating Major Domo, you can talk to him, and in turn, he will summon Ragnaros. But what is an aqua quintessence, you might ask? Well, it is the reason why we are here in the first place. Each quintessence can douse one rune of warding, and there are seven in total. Once each and every one has been doused, Executus will spawn. To get them, it's easy, you simply need to reach Honored with the faction Hydraxian Waterlords, and they will give it to you completely for free. Now there are two ways to do this. First, you could simply clear Molten Core, and in three weeks you would have enough reputation to get the Quintessence. Alternatively, you could kill the Desert Rumblers in Silithus, which grant five reputation each. With some quick math, we need about 9,000 reputation total to reach Honored. And since they give five each, we only need to kill about 1,000 800 of them. Because it's such a monumental grind, I can be basically sure that I'm the only person who will be doing it. And by doing so, I am 100% guaranteeing my spot in the raid. Because without me, they simply cannot kill Ragnaros. But we still need to do something about our gear, because theoretically, while we have our spot guaranteed, if we die, it's still kinda bad. And we're going to start in the best place possible. Upper Blackrock Spire. Because hardcore servers are ran on the last phase of the game, it's actually pretty easy to get very solid non-raid gear, like this turban for example. But traditionally when looking at items as a caster, you usually completely disregard main stats like intellect or stamina. This is because while they give you health and mana, that doesn't actually directly increase your DPS. Unlike stats like spell power, spell hit and spell crit, because they're good for parsing. But this is hardcore. I don't want to enter raids with 2000 HP and die the second somebody looks my way. Therefore, I'm going to take the cautionary route and actually look for gear which has a balance of, you know, good DPS stats and some survivability stats, if possible. You know, the crazy thing with these runs is that we actually got three main handle runs to drop in a row. Ooh! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's no way! What the fuck Dear is happening? and they're 9% drop chance each, and we didn't even see an offhand. But after UBRS, it was time to assemble perhaps the most elite group Hardcore had ever seen. Let me introduce you. To start off, we have none other than the main tank and raid leader of our guild tanking in our dungeons. Then, our first rogue is actually the rank 1 rogue in both Ankirash and Naxxramas in original classic, absolutely demolishing the competition at the time. And do you remember Pad, the priest I leveled with who ultimately died at 37? Well, during my one week break, he didn't only get to 60, he also died on another 47 priest. Nerd warning. And of course there's myself, I am... Um... I uh, made people do a funny skip once. And then there's Bieberg. First, we sent a full run of Strath home, then a quick two hour stint in Blackrock Depths, where we actually decided to send a full quest run, which actually loaded me up with a ton of gear, so it was pretty decent. But as the days progressed, we kept blasting. A few more UBRS into a lower Blackrock Spire, back into the upper Blackrock Spire. Yo, imagine, imagine like five boys, we just, we just pull up. Everyone land party, just do dawn just the entire night, six. Like, it would be so yeah, blessed. Hey, hey, Holy f- <laughs> 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 It was not normal until the <laughs> You had me in the first day, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> Dyrmal East to finally get me my new rank of water, which I had been slacking on, and then going out and sending a tribute run. Slowly but surely, making my gear a little bit more respectable. But after a lot of dungeons, it was time for our first real adventure as a guild. 
Azure goes. World bosses are actually quite abundant on Hardcore Realms. There are just so many layers up at the same time which greatly inflate the numbers of bosses spawned. That and few guilds are actually, you know, able to take down the bosses with unstable servers threatening their life at every moment. But there is one thing I've not told you yet. You see, our tank, you know, the guy who has been tanking my dungeons, the raid leader and main tank of our guild, was also actually raid leading when Mortal Elite lost half their players to Kazakh on unofficial servers. Of course, it wasn't his fault. Somebody fell down, Ninja pulled the boss, but... You never know. Azure Ghost is definitely one of the easier bosses. The only mechanic being somewhat scary is his teleport, which teleports all targets within 30 yards on top of him, resetting everyone's threat. Of course, this means if you are outside the 30 yards, you don't get the threat reset while everyone else does and that the boss will go after you and kill you. But basically, all that means is that you have to be within 30 yards and the boss will die. But for being one of the easier bosses, the gear available for us is actually quite insane. Mainly the wand and the weapon. And we actually managed to kill three in total thanks to layer hopping. Uh, but I was not lucky enough to receive any loot, so... <laughs> waste of time. And with that, our first 40-man adventure came to a close and it was back to dungeoneering yet again. In exchange for getting the Greater Frost Protection Potion recipe, which is kinda needed and mandatory if you want to try Azure Ghost, our guild decided to help the guy who sold it to us with a Dire Mall West run, which I somehow got roped into. Now this was probably the only dungeon I didn't want to try, because it's actually quite scary. There's a lot that can go wrong, bosses can teleport you from left field and pull entire rooms with them if you're not careful, the last boss slaps like absolute hell, but luckily we cleared it without much issue. Basically the only thing that could take our group down right now would be like a warship. Did you know that you could play the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made for free? War Thunder has over 2,000 playable ships, tanks, planes, and helicopters. So no matter what kind of playstyle you prefer, it's got you covered with dynamic, combined arms PvP battles. I'm personally a big fan of flying, and War Thunder lets me do that easily with mouse and keyboard thanks to its intuitive mouse A mode. If you're cool like me, you like anime. Which is very exciting because right now you can even customize your own vehicles with thousands of anime skins made by the community itself. Or better yet, you could join the creative community on your own and create your own skins. The game is available for free on PC, Xbox and PlayStation. So no matter if you're a new player or a returning one, make sure you use my link in the description and you can even claim the Body Pillow Pack. Which includes multiple premium vehicles, a premium account, and of course your own Dakimakura. And even more. It's only available for a limited time, so make sure you do not wait. Click the link now. Thank you to War Thunder for sponsoring this video. I might make this sound like it was all smooth sailing, like there's not much risk involved. But outside of our little dungeon group, it was an actual bloodbath. Whole groups of 60s dying left, right and center. Every hour we would have a new max level death if not entire groups die. It was pure chaos out there. Slime, slime! I'm coming, I'm coming. Oh shit. You just left the mob in the Nova with me, man. What the hell? Hey. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Imagine these guys just dropping like flies in the guild, and they yeah, wonder what the, what what the good group is doing. They join they join the challenge. That is so funny, actually. A new pressing matter has appeared. The guild is planning to send one singular run of Soul Group, a twenty man raid, and with a roster of only twenty people, getting a spot with our gear might be quite difficult. And let me say, while I've gotten quite a good arsenal of stuff the last few days, I am still quite far behind. So to help me catch up, I splurged a good amount of money on some Magister pieces and did the 0.5 questline to bring me up to speed just a little bit. And to help out even further, we actually went back for some more Ashur Ghost kills once he had respawned. And guess what? I actually won the wand. Uh, I actually only won it because one mage forgot to roll, but you know, it is what it is. Somewhere during this time though, Blizzard patches you can only loot a world boss once per reset, essentially wasting our second kill, so our fun was over for now. Guys, 
something incredible just happened. It turns out the guild master recognized me in guild chat from my arcane mage videos and turns out he's a fan. So if I could only use that leverage now to coerce him into getting me into the CG run, we would be golden. But the signups have 75 total people signed and 13 of those are mages in a raid where you max bring three. But I think we might actually have a shot, especially thanks to this new little development. But they benched me. So now it's dead to me. Instead of Soul Garub, we decided to send a quick run of Skolomans. And with this dungeon done, it would actually be pretty cool because that meant we would have cleared every single high level dungeon available in the game and survived so far. Nice. The thing is, though, during this Skolomans run, something happened. Oh, no, 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 Holy fuck. One of the mages in the Solgaro roster died in Lower Blackrock Spire, which, of course, while tragic, and I feel sorry for his loss, it does open up a spot in the raid roster. And guess who they approached to take that spot? Not even 10 minutes after he died, I was officially in the first Solgaro run of the guild. This will be the first raid our guild attempts. And we got some few familiar faces in here. There's eight total bosses we will be attempting today. And while Soul Group can be kind of dangerous, we are running in with full world buffs. And as long as we know what we're doing, stuff shouldn't pose that much risk. This raid was actually released as a catch-up. So the gear in here is quite good compared to the difficulty level. With there basically being a piece available for every slot. The first real dangerous part of the raid are these bats. Basically, you need to kill them before they explode and instantly kill the entire... Oh my okay. fucking god, guys. Are you fucking done with something? You're meant to stay in and DPS those to the death, man. Pad died. Again. So, the call here was actually to kill all the small bats first, then swap to the big one so you can kill it before it even starts casting. But what happened is half the DPS went on the big ones, half the DPS went on the small ones, the big one blew up because the melee were too scared to stay in and they ran out killing the two people who actually stayed in. So a warrior died, which I don't really care about, but then also pad, which is kind of sucky. The reason he was even in in the first place was because the warriors weren't picking up the bats. So he had aggro and just ran in so they could pick it up off him. But as with any loss, life must go on. And it did so pretty quickly. After a few minutes, the dead were already replaced and we proceeded in great solemnity to clear the rest of the raid. After that first hiccup, it was actually quite smooth. I guess the deaths really put people on edge and made them start focusing. Who would have thunk? And we managed to clear Soul Garub in little over an hour. Now here's the best part. I soft reserved Jindo's bag of whammies, an absolutely insane offhand, but it only has a 15% drop chance. It dropped, and I was the only person on it. So the heart of a car was also up for roll, exclusively between mages and warlocks, which I also won, which is also crazy because I basically had a dead trinket slot, and this is extremely powerful. And I also won a belt. So, not too bad. This is some very, very good gear. In fact, I'm probably one of the best geared mages on the server right now, which is quite the turnaround. I probably don't even need to get douses to secure my spot in Molten Core anymore. Still, this does not change the goal of my life, which is killing Ragnaros. And the same two things still stand in our way to accomplish that. I had been passively farming the Desert Rumblers the past few days getting about 1,000 reputation per hour. Which means after nine hours of total farming, I was one reputation away from Honored, which is the furthest you can get without actually stepping into Molten Core. The last bit coming from like a boss kill or something. So after securing our Onyxia attunement, we could focus on the next step on the list fire resistance gear. Basically, our tanks want to be fire resistant capped when fighting Ragnos because then they can essentially avoid one of the mechanics being the knockback. I think I don't really know the mechanics yet. And to get that, they need some epic pieces of gear only available through blacksmithing. Problem is, our blacksmith kinda died on like the first day of hitting 60. So now it's up to AO to level it completely from scratch. And then more importantly, get reputation with the Thorium Brotherhood. The Brotherhood offers a variety of fire resistance gear at different breakpoints, going all the way up to Exalted. But we fortunately only need to reach Revered. And basically the only way to get reputation with these guys is through Turnits. So after collectively buying around 2000 Dark Iron Ore, we ventured into Blackrock Mountain. 
making our way to the guzzler to secure our plants. Additionally, the only place you can smelt these bars is deep into the depths, close to molten core. So we went on a quick trip to smelt all the necessary bars. Now, the only thing standing between us and the items we need to smith are a few drops that actually come from molten core itself, so we cannot get that yet. But the time was up. Quickly after smelting the bars, we ventured over to the island to get the spirit of Sandalar buff, before bracing ourselves as we entered our first 40-man raid. Onyxia. The boss is pretty straightforward. As long as you position the boss after the air phase and all the subsequent aggro resets, the dragon should die without complications. And it was as easy as that. Bam. First 40 man raid done. The fun doesn't end yet though, since now it was time to venture into the long-awaited lair of Ragnaros himself, Molten Core. I've done a lot to prepare for this day, grinded the reputation, secured the fire resistance gear, but we are not done yet. While we have the reputation required for the Aqua Quintessence, I actually need to complete a few more quests before that can happen. First, I need to kill a few trash mobs inside the raid, easy enough. And second, I need to gather the hands of four different bosses and only then will I receive my Daos. Problem is, I've got to leave the raid during this to turn in the quests and get the new ones, which can actually take some time because the humble Hydraxian Waterlords have decided to situate themselves in the far reaches of Ashara, out in the middle of the ocean. So it's quite a distance to travel. I can prepare though and have my Hearthstone set to add Fashion Veil to speed up the entire process. But guess what? Okay, so I was thinking after the quest is done, I should go just get out and get the uh, the hands quest, right? No, don't worry about the hands quest for this week. After hours of farming, hundreds of gold spent, Ao decided to bitch out at the last minute and made the call that we are not killing Ragnaros this week. Oh well. So yeah, I guess we cleared Molten Core. Or, you know, like, the bosses we could clear because we didn't have Dowsers to kill the final two. And we actually did so without a singular death. Well, without a singular death during the actual raid. On the final boss we were doing, Gar, because he dispels buffs and we didn't want him to dispel our world buffs, um, you kill the boss first and leave the adds until after. So technically, the entire raid was cleared, but then a warlock died to one of the adds he had banished. So he died after we had completed the raid. Whoops. But with Molten Core done, it was time for me to hibernate. I've spent a lot of time playing this game, and I needed to take a break. And instead play the game even more. I actually just had to level my Arcan Mage instead for a bit. By the way, this was like done a month ago. I was just waiting for this thing. Sorry about that. I still showed up to Onyxia on the way, and we had a quick tour back to Blackrock Depths to craft all the required fire resistance pieces, and then eventually, a whole week later, it was time for our second run of Molten Core, and this time, hopefully, we would clear all of it. Also, look, you know how Pat died in CG? Well, yeah, he's back on his fourth priest, already at level 60 one week later. A mage's role in this raid is kind of suppressed, as you're mostly playing a support role. This is also why I'm showing up in deep arcane spec, because one, I'm spending most of the bosses decursing, and two, if I died now, it would be an absolute travesty. The name of the game in classic, especially hardcore, is to be strategic when pulling enemies. Individually, most trash just falls over, but the second you accidentally get one too many, things can go south real quick, due to stuns, limited amount of tanks, and just too much damage in general to handle. So it's it's key to have a hunter that knows what they are doing when pulling, as most of the risk actually lies in enemies just social aggroing or patrols walking into you. So taking our time is somewhat necessary, but we also don't want to spend too much time because we have our buffs ticking and we don't want them to run out before we reach Ragnaros. Bosses in Classic are easy, that much is known, but they are unforgiving. Usually there's just one mechanic you need to keep track of, and if handled properly there's basically no risk to your raid, but one misstep can easily lead to your death. Oh, and of course threat. If you over aggro, you're instantly dead. The plan for this raid was simple. We would reach Gar and use the Chrono Boon to store our buffs. Then we would split up into smaller groups, everybody would go into Blackrock Spire and grab the fire resistance buff from the enemies in there by mind controlling them. This is like 80-something fire resistance that lasts for an hour, which is just completely insane. It's like the equivalent of two epic resistance pieces. But that also means from now on, we are on a one-hour timer to reach Ragnaros. After groups were done, we reconvened back in Molten Core, ran back to Berengeddon, and then repopped our buffs once again. Now, it was just as easy as clearing the rest of the way towards all the runes of warding. Shastra is especially scary because he can deal such an insane amount of damage in a short period of time, but with all cooldowns and good decursing, he should die quickly enough. And 
as the Sulfuring Harbinger died, I retrieved the last hand I needed for my quest to get my quintessence. And after finishing off Golemag, it was time for me to take my leave. So, here's the thing. There are seven runes of warding, but there's only one of me. You can actually only carry one quintessence at a time, which is again a problem because the Hydraxian Waterlords are located in perhaps the most remote location in the entire game. So that could take a very, very long time. But fret not, we have of course devised a means of transportation. First, I would leave the raid and join the group of my clicker plus a summoner located on the Hydraxian Islet. Then simply retrieve the quintessence before I join the main raid. In classic, you can actually not summon into raid, probably because of how they've done attunements, which means that the second group is located outside of Molten Core, ready to summon me once I've got my quintessence. Once I take that summon, I just hop into the raid. Then we got our third team, consisting of one warlock and two clickers, just running around to every rune of warding and summon me once I am inside. I accept the summon, I pop the rune, I leave the raid, I repeat, six more times. Once all the runes are gone, Major Domo Executus will spawn. He himself is mostly a fight about proper crowd control and tanking, as you keep half the enemies polymorph through the entire fight and the other half just split up. Once all the elites are dead though, the healers kind of break out of the CC and start blasting the raid with something called Shadow Shock. This deals AoE damage and you're supposed to split them up to prevent it, and we kind of forgot about that, so the entire raid basically almost died. But Everyone lived, so no big deal, I guess. But that's probably the scariest encounter we've had so far. Now, it was time. It took a lot to make this happen, but finally, we are here at our goal, Ragnaros himself. As ranged, all you need to do is spread out in groups of two to reduce the number of people hit by knockback. As a melee, you want to move out of the boss's range as Wrath of Ragnaros is off cooldown, as he can knock the tank and then turn around, slapping the closest melee. This is also why we have full fire resistance gear on our tanks to hopefully completely negate this mechanic, but there is still a chance that he can get knocked. And in that case, we have a second backup tank ready to pick up the boss. Then it was as simple as pumping the boss down until it reaches 0 HP. Ragnaros technically does have a second phase where he submerges, but there's been like not a single classic raid so far that's managed to trigger this phase, unless like half the raid has died or something. And with full war buffs he should die before that happens. Please clap the boss. Yeah, please clap him. Melian. Melian. Yeah. Execute phase now. You can maybe taunt now and just go him. Yeah. Oh. And then you mark. Yeah, that's fine. Ah, easy. Very nicely done, guys. You're and... banned. And there you have it. Ragnaros is dead on official hardcore servers. And I even got rewarded a nice pair of pants for it. And my goal in life is done. Now what? Again, make sure you use my link in the description to download War Thunder for free and get all the amazing bonuses like premium vehicles, your new Dakimakura, and more. It's here for a limited time, so don't you dare wait. I guarantee you will like the game. See ya!